Hey to it, kids. Shabbat Shalom. Joey here, and I'm going to be your host for this week's Sabbath School. You know, we've had some pretty good times together, haven't we? Been on some big adventures. I remember the first time that I met you. Remember we went over and I took you to the rock garden, and we got to see all those little castles and even that tower, and we were talking about the Tower of Babel. Yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Man, we've done all kinds of things. We, we rode camels together. Uh... Oh, we even went to the Grand Canyon together, and y'all got to see what the inside of our RV looked like. Remember that? <sighs> Man, we've even been on flights together. I took you on an airplane one time. That was pretty cool. Oh, you know what my favorite one, though, is? My favorite adventure that we've had so far was when we were doing the story about Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah, and we went down in the cave. Wasn't that fun? Oh, yeah, it was. Well, today, I'm going to take a different kind of adventure with you. We're gonna do an adventure that's not outside. We're gonna do one that's inside. We're gonna do something where we talk and answer a question that's kind of a hard question. And you may have had it before. Here's the question. Why do bad things happen to good people? Have you ever asked that before? It's kind of a tough question to answer. And long and short of it is, is we may or may not be able to answer it. But in today's Sabbath school, we're going to go and read a story about somebody that was a good guy. It was Joseph. He had some really bad stuff happen to him. He got kidnapped by his own family. He got sold into slavery. I can't even imagine that. Then, while he was a slave, he got accused of doing something that he didn't do and thrown into what was the dungeon, he called it. I couldn't even imagine that, could you? I bet Joseph pondered that question a bunch saying why is bad things happening to me so in this chapter though we're gonna get a little bit of an answer on it that's pretty cool but don't let me spoil it let's get into our sabbath school we're gonna start out with prayer we're gonna have song then we'll read our story and i'll be back with you in just a minute shama israel Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malhuto Leolam Vayed. Amen, Amen. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful day that you've made. We thank you for bringing us through another week and to another Shabbat. And we thank you so much for Train Up in Torah and for everyone who is involved in putting this on and for all the families and the children who are watching. And um, we pray that you would lead us and that you would guide us through your Holy Spirit to walk in your ways and to honor you and please you in all that we say and do. And we just love you so much, and we thank you and pray this in Yeshua's wonderful name. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. I have another song I'd like to share with you, and the name of this song is called I Am The One. One day the sons of Israel came. Second time, knowing they may be charged with crime. 
Shalom. Hi, Trained Open Torah friends. Are you ready to find out how Yosef finally reveals himself to his brothers? Okay, follow along with me as I read Genesis chapter 45. And Yosef was unable to restrain himself before all those who stood by him. And he called out, have everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Yosef made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Mitzrites and the house of Pharaoh heard it. And Yosef said to his brothers, I am Yosef. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were unable to answer him, for they trembled before him. Then Yosef said to his brothers, Please come near to me. And when they came near, he said, I am Yosef, your brother, whom you sold into Mitzrayim. And now, do not be grieved nor displeased with yourselves because you sold me here. For Elohim sent me before you to preserve life. For two years now, the scarcity of food has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there is neither plowing nor harvesting. And Elohim sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant in the earth and to give life to you by a great escape. So then, you did not send me here, but Elohim. And he has set me for a father to Pharaoh, and master of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. Hurry, and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus says your son Yosef, Elohim has made me master of all Mitzrayim. Come down to me, do not delay. And you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds, and all that you have, and I shall provide for you there, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty, because five years of scarcity of food are still to come. And look, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Binyamin see that it is my mouth that speaks to you, and you shall inform my father of all my esteem in Mitzrayim, and of all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. And he fell on his brother Binyamin's neck and wept, and Binyamin wept on his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brother spoke with him. And the report of it was heard by the house of Pharaoh, saying, the brothers of Yosef have come. And it was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said to Yosef, Say to your brothers, Do this, load your beasts, and go. Enter the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come to me, and I will give you the best of the land of Mitzrayim. And you eat the fat of the land. And you, you have been commanded, do this. Take wagons out of the land of Mitzrayim for your little ones and your wives, and you shall bring your father and come. And do not be concerned about your goods, for the best of all the land of Mitzrayim is yours. And the sons of Israel did so, 
And Yosef gave them wagons according to the mouth of Pharaoh, and he gave them food for the journey. He gave to all of them, to each man, changes of garment. But to Benjamin, he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of garments. And he sent to his father this, 10 donkeys loaded with the bets of Mitzrayim and 10 female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and food for his father for the journey. So he sent his brothers away and they left. And he said to them, do not quarrel along the way. And they went up out of Mitzrayim and came to the land of Canaan and to Yaakov their father. And they told him saying, Yosef is still alive and he is governor over all the land of Mitzrayim. And Yaakov's heart ceased for he did not believe them. But when they spoke to him all the words with which Yosef had spoken to them, and when he saw the wagons which Yosef had sent to transport him, the spirit of Yaakov their father revived. And Yisrael said, Enough! My son Yosef is still alive. Let me go and see him before I die. This week we heard about how Joseph, when he revealed himself to his brothers, that he wept. He wept over Benjamin and hugged him, and then he wept over his 10 other brothers. Tears may seem like a simple thing, but in fact, our Father created tears to do so many things. Did you know that tears are made up of different mixtures at different times for different reasons? Cool, huh? We produce tears every day to help our eyes stay moist, and it smooths the surface of our eyes so that light can refract correctly enabling us to see clearly. Tears also contain components that heal the damaged surface of our eyes. Tears also bathe our eyes in an enzyme called lysozyme. It helps to keep our eyes free from bacteria and viruses. Lysozyme kills 90 to 95 percent of all bacteria in a mere 5 to 10 minutes. Without it, eye infections would make people go blind. Do you know why you cry when you cut onions? Well, they make you cry because they release a chemical that when cut, it turns into sulfuric acid when it makes contact with your eyes. But the father gave you tear reflexes that makes the sulfuric acid almost harmless. Isn't that cool? One of the most amazing things about tears is that it can also help a person deal with emotional problems. A scientific study has found that after crying, people actually do feel better, both physically and physiologically. And they feel worse if they suppress their tears, which means if they don't cry, they'll feel worse. At a medical center in Minnesota, tears caused by simple irritants were compared to those brought on by emotions. The researchers found that the stress-induced tears actually removed toxic substance from the body. Volunteers watched a sad movie and they cried from that. Then they cut fresh onions and they cried from that. The researchers found that tears from a movie called Emotional Tears contained far more biological byproducts, which means that crying emotional tears actually helps to remove toxins from your body that build up during an emotional process. The research concluded that the chemicals built up in the body during stress were removed by tears, which actually lowered stress. Suppressing tears increases stress and actually contributes to diseases aggravated by stress, such as high blood pressure and heart problems and many, many other things. Crying also, as we saw in our story, helps not only our health, but also a group's sense of community, and it can deepen friendships. You can communicate so much through tears. It can tell others that you're compassionate, that you're in pain, that you're sad, or that you're extremely happy. Tears are a gift from the Father to express and overflow the emotions we feel, like a river of healing and connection. So I don't know about you guys, but the next time I feel the urge, I'm just going to let the rivers flow. All right, what did y'all think about that story? It's pretty cool, wasn't it? I mean... Think about it. Joseph went on a big adventure. I didn't say it was a fun adventure, but he did go on a big adventure. And throughout the entire time, you know, he had some really bad things happen to him. And I guarantee you, inside his heart, he was wondering, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? 
And it wasn't until he was revealing himself to his brothers that he told everybody why. You remember what he said? He said, y'all meant this for evil, but Yahweh meant it for good. He was able to look through that situation and realize that Yahweh had taken him from being a slave down in the dungeons up to second in command in Mitzrayim. And through him, Yahweh saved not only Israel, which is important to us because, you know, we're, we're Hebrews, but he saved all of Mitzrayim through that trial that Yosef went through. So that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into our next segment. We're going to have Hebrew, we're going to have history, and then we'll have our moral. Shabbat Shalom everybody, this is Miss Rachel and it's time for Hebrew. So I decided that since um, we have at the beginning of our Torah study today, Joseph telling his brothers, Ani Yosef, which means I am Joseph, that we would do a little practice on how to introduce ourselves in Hebrew. So if you were to meet somebody for the first time, we were going to learn what you would say to introduce yourself. So here we have two pretend children um, and on the screen, and this little girl's name is Hannah, and this boy's name is Aharon, and Hannah is going to say, Shalom, Ani Hana. And that means, hello, I am Hana. Or she could also say, Shalom, Shemi Hana. Shemi means my name is Hana. Shemi means my name. And then Aaron is going to answer, or Aharon is going to answer, and he is going to say, Shalom, Shemi, Aharon. And then he's going to say, it's nice to meet you, which means Naim Me'od, Naim Me'od. And then he's going to ask, how are you? So he says, Mashlomech, Mashlomech. Now Hannah can answer in many different ways, but she's going to say Ani, which means I am, and then she can choose one of the different items here. If she is feeling great, then she would say Mitsuyan. If she just is Tov, you know, just good, she would say Tov. Okay is Beseder. Low Tov means not good. Or lo ra means not bad. Ra is bad and no ra is horrible. So she's going to choose what she's going, how she's going to answer. I'm going to pretend that she's saying I'm great. She's going to say ani mitsuyan. And then she wants to ask how he's doing. So he's, she's going to say ve'ata, which ve'ata means and you. And then for a boy, she would say, Mashlom Ha. Mashlom Ha. Notice that the ending changed a little bit. Instead of Mashlomech, we have Mashlom Ha for a boy. 
And Aaron's going to answer, and he's going to say, Ani, I am, and then choose one of these items right here to answer either I'm great, good, okay, not good, not bad, bad, or horrible. And so I'm going to pretend that Aaron says, I'm okay. So he says, Ani, the setter. And then he says toda, which means thank you. And then he's going to ask, where are you from? So he says, me efo at. When you put me in front of a word, me, that means from. And efo means where. And at is you for a girl. So he's saying, from where are you, literally, is how we would say it. But um, we understand it as, where are you from? Me efo at. Now Hannah is going to answer, ani, which is, I am, again, ani, me America. So we have that me, again, which means from America. Ani me America. And Hannah's going to ask Aaron, me efo ata. So again, notice the ending changed a little bit. We have ata for a boy, and we had just at for a girl. So from where are you? Me efo ata. And Aaron's going to answer and say, Ani me from Yisrael. Ani me Yisrael. Now Aaron's going to ask, how old are you? So in Hebrew, the way we say that is bat, which literally means daughter. Kama means how many are you? Ot. There's that word ot, which means you again. So literally we're saying, a daughter of how many are you? But in English we would just say, how old are you? Bat kama at. And now Hannah is going to answer, Ani, I am, bat, a daughter, eser, of ten, or I am ten years old. Ani bat eser. Now Aaron, is going to ask, I'm sorry, Hannah is going to ask Aaron, Ben Kama Acha, which means a son, Ben is son, Kama, how many, Acha, are you? Ben Kama Acha, or how old are you, or a boy? And Aaron answers, Ani, I am, Ben, son of seven, Sheva, or I am seven years old. Now, Aaron's ready to go and to get back to what he was doing, so he's going to say, it was very nice to meet you. And the way we say that in Hebrew is Haya, it was, Naim, which means a pleasure, and Me'od, very much. Hayah Naim Me'od. It was very nice to meet you. And Hannah says, also, Gam, which means also, you, Ata. Gam Ata. And then, Lihitraot is how we say, see you later. Lihitraot. Lihitraot. And Aaron says, Shalom. Goodbye. So that's our entire conversation. And on the Facebook page, we have uh, uploaded a conversation sheet, which has everything that we just went to print this off. And you can practice this at home with your brothers and sisters or with your mom or dad and get a little bit familiar with how to introduce yourself in Hebrew. Here we have my daughter and my son, Hannah and Aaron, or Hannah and Aharon, practicing
Shalom should be Yehana. Shalom should be Aharon. Ne'im me'od ma shalom me'ah. Ani tov. Ba'ata ma shalom ha. Ani b'seir. Me'af epo at. Ani America, me apo ata, ani Israel, bat kama at, ani bat eser ben kama ata, ani ben sheba sheba. Haya nei meo, gama ata lehi meot. Shalom, shalom. So that was their time practicing, and I hope that you guys are able to spend some time practicing as well. And I hope that you have a wonderful Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. The Yitra Oat. We'll see you soon. Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Miss Jessica and Miss Awen are here today with your history lesson. I hope you guys are having a blessed Shabbat and enjoying your visit with us here at Train Up and Torah. I've got a question for you. Have you ever been on a long journey? Yeah, you know, like maybe going to visit family that lives far away, or even on a vacation. I don't know about y'all, but long trips are always hard on me. I don't like to be cooped up in a car all day long. I get sleepy, and I get cranky. Eventually, I end up snacking a little too much because I'm bored of riding or driving, and it seems like it can take forever to get to where we're going. Well, I sort of imagine Joseph's family feeling that way a bit with how far they had to travel to get to and from Egypt. What a journey. They didn't have cars like we do. They moved at a much slower pace than we do because they used animals such as mules, donkeys, and camels to travel those long distances, and they even walked some of the way too. In today's scripture, we see that Joseph's family will be moving into the land of Goshen. Pharaoh himself said that he would give them the best of the land of Egypt. So, they're leaving behind Canaan to move to Egypt to be with Joseph and have enough food to survive the next five years of famine that was still to come. Pharaoh also commanded them to take wagons out of the land of Egypt for the children and wives to ride in. Why do you suppose he gave them wagons to use? Yeah, that's right. It was exhausting going that long distance, and Pharaoh knew they had family to bring back with them on their return trip. So, he gave them wagons to help make the journey less stressful for those traveling. Can you think of some ways to make traveling less stressful when going on a long trip? Well, even though I'm not a perfect passenger, and I don't like super long road trips, my family and I have learned a few tricks to help us when we take a long road trip. We stop often for potty breaks and getting gas, and whenever we stop for those potty breaks or gas, everyone gets out and stretches or moves their body for a few minutes to get the stiffness out of our bodies and our blood circulating. We pack snacks and drinks so that we always stay hydrated and hopefully a little less cranky because Miss Jessica tends to get a little crabby when I get hungry. We also like to pack things to do. The kids will pack coloring books and little things that they can play with, and sometimes I'll pack my yarn and crochet hooks so that I can keep my hands busy when I'm super bored. So just like Pharaoh had the good sense to send wagons with Joseph's brothers for their families to ride in for an easier trip, there are things you can do nowadays to make trips a little less stressful too. What about you? Are there any special things that your family does to help make long journeys less stressful? Those sound like some awesome ideas. Well, I hope to see you all again next week here at Trained Up in Torah. Shabbat Shalom! So, Torah friends, wasn't that a powerful story of forgiveness? Yosef not only forgave his brothers, but he blessed them abundantly. And even Pharaoh jumped in and blessed them. Alright, so... Did you know that in Yohanan chapter 8, the Pharisees brought a woman to be stoned for her sin? That's right, they're going to throw actual stones at her. But Yeshua stopped it, and he said, Let him without sin cast the first stone. 
so no one was able to because we all have sin. We're going to show you how to play a game using a stone. It's going to be a game about forgiveness. Keep on watching! All right, friends. So here's how we're going to play our game. This here is a diagram of hopscotch. And as you can see, on four, five, nine, and eight, we have replaced the numbers with forgive, forgiven, Yahweh, and Yeshua. Okay. So Bundy has drawn the hopscotch here on the ground, and you can do this as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our stone and we're going, she's gonna throw it. And then if she lands on one of the special boxes, which are forgiven, Yahweh and Yeshua, then she's going to say a scripture that has to do with those words. All right, so let's see how the game is played. I got my stone and I'm gonna to toss it and hop to the box. Okay, what'd you get? Six. Okay. I get? got Yeshua eight. Okay, number eight, Yeshua. All right, go for it. Okay, what's your scripture? blood was poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. That's right. Good. I got four forgive. Alright. Here it is. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as Yah forgave you. That's right. Forgive. Tender hearted. I got nine Yahweh. Okay. Gives us and remembers our sins no more. Hallelujah! So that is how the game is played, friends. We hope you enjoy this. Shabbat shalom. Right, I wanted to show how you could play the game if you're unable to go outside or jump around. So what you would do is you would draw the same hopscotch board on paper like this, and then you would have a little stone or some little item. It could even be a crumbled up piece of paper and you would throw it, okay? And then you can hop with your fingers. Okay, you got your stone. You would say your scripture about being forgiven. And then you would continue hopping with your fingers and be done. All right, so just an adaptation for you. Enjoy. All right, kiddos, I want to leave y'all with a lesson that I learned one time. It came from a guy that said that the world pushes against you. And when the world's pushing on you and it's beating on you, uh, people tend to do one of two things. They either allow the world just to push them around and they just sew up and go wherever the world pushes them. It's not really good. You know, that's, that allows you to be bullied. The second thing that people tend to do is they tend to roar up and get mad and want to fight back and blame others for it whatever's going on. It's not very good either because if you're blaming somebody, you know, you're powerless in that situation. You can't do anything. He said the real thing that you should do is, which is the third option is, is when the world's pushing against you, pick your head up and look around and see, what can I learn from this? How can I help this not to happen again in the future? And if you think about it, that's what Joseph did. He said, why is this bad thing happening to me? And he was able to pick his head up, look around and see, how I meant this for good. So if you're ever going through any kind of trial, see if you can do that. See if you can look up and see, what am I supposed to be learning here? It'll probably help it. That being said, if you are going through some type of trial, if something bad has happened to you, it's still gonna hurt. And just by looking up and looking around and trying to find out what you're gonna learn, that's not gonna diminish how bad it hurts. It's going to hurt. And just know that that's part of the process. Can you imagine how bad Joseph hurt through that whole time that he was being kidnapped, being in slavery, and then being down in the dungeon? 
Hopefully you won't have to go through anything like that. But Yahweh still may be using any of those situations that may be going on with you. Whether it be a broken leg, whether it be you didn't get picked for the team, or maybe somebody died that you really, really loved. He may be using those situations to be able to use you for something for him. You know what? I can think of a situation where something bad happened to somebody that Yahweh is using for good right here, right now. Matter of fact, me, you, everybody on this is a part of this. That person is Miss Kaylee. You know, Miss Kaylee, she's got a disease called Lyme's disease. And she didn't ask for that. She didn't deserve that. It, it was something bad that happened to her. And it has debilitated her. Do y'all know what debilitated means? For, for Miss Kaylee, y'all call her the bus lady. For Miss Kaylee, sometimes she can't even get up and walk outside because her body is so weak. Could you imagine that? Some of you can. Some of you are already sitting in a wheelchair right now watching this saying, I know exactly what that's like. And there are others that can get up and run around. They're like, I have no idea. So everybody has a different journey to go on. But listen at this, all right? It wasn't until Miss Kaylee was sitting on her bus, sitting there trying to figure out, man, I wish there was some kind of Sabbath school that my kids could be a part of, that everybody could be a part of, that they could watch with me while we were inside on this bus that trained up in Torah wasn't invented yet. And had she not been there, had she not been thinking about it, had she not been put in that situation, Yahweh couldn't have used her for the good that he's been able to do with this show. And I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't know you. You wouldn't know me. And we wouldn't all be friends. Isn't that really cool? Yeah, it is. So Yahweh can use the worst of situations for his esteem and for his might. And it'll work out really good. All right, let's finish up this Sabbath school. We're going to have a craft. We're going to find out about a snack. We're going to have a song. And then they're going to get us prayed out. Y'all have a blessed Shabbat. I'll see you. Shabbat Shalom to our friends. It's Brother Stan here. Got something special I want to share with you today. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about multi-track recording. Now, the reason that's important is, is because I'm going to be playing several instruments that you can hear, but you're only going to see me playing one instrument. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Just for fun, I name all of my guitars. Now, this one right here is named Autumn. Now, I'm going to be playing Autumn in the song today, and you'll be able to hear Autumn. Can, can you tell why she's named Autumn? That's right, it's because of all the Autumn leaves. Now, you're going to hear Autumn playing something like this. thing that you're going to hear is you're going to hear a bass guitar. Now the bass guitar's name is Burl. Now this is Burl. Now the reason Burl is named Burl is because it's made out of a burl. A burl is like a great big tree knot. And so I named it Burl. You're going to hear Burl playing things like Okay, you hear that? So it's going to be way down low when you hear Burl. And then, I'll be playing while I'm singing. You'll also hear two, uh, two people singing, but they're both, they're both brothers stand. Because, see, what we do with multi-track recording is we put down one... one instrument part and then another instrument part and then another instrument part and then the singer and then other singers with them and so you're going to get to hear all that today now this guitar's name is Danny Boy I named it that because it's a Dan Electro alright and uh, Danny Boy is going to be uh, what I'll be playing today and I've also got to tell you I'm not the drummer that you're going to hear. 
I've got a little buddy to help me with the drumming today, so I'm going to I'm going to ask him to start playing now. Are you ready, buddy? Hit it. 1 2 3 4 Thanks for joining us on Trained Up in Torah, my little Torah friends, and my big Torah friends. I uh, hope you have a blessed Shabbat, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom, everybody! This is Miss Shannon with your memory verse for this week which is Bereshith, or Genesis 45, verse 3. Let's get started. And Yosef said to his brothers, I am Yosef. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were unable to answer him, for they trembled before him. Bereshith, or Genesis 45, verse 3. All right, so now let's try to memorize this verse. Fill in the blanks that I put in the verse. Pause the video if you feel like you need more time. And Yosef said to his brothers, I am Yosef. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were unable to answer him, for they trembled before him. Bereshith or Genesis 45 verse 3 Awesome job, guys! Now let's try filling in the blanks again. As always, pause the video if you need more time.
And Yosef said to his brothers, I am Yosef. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were unable to answer him, for they trembled before him. Bereshith or Genesis 45 verse 3 Great job! Now it's about time for you to try reciting that memory verse all by yourself. It's okay if you don't get it this time. What matters is that you try. And Yosef said to his brothers, I am Yosef. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were unable to answer him, for they trembled before him. Bereshith or Genesis 45 verse 3 Woohoo! Awesome job, guys! So let's discuss this verse. In this verse, we see that Yosef finally reveals himself to his brothers. But instead of being jubilant and happy, at first his brothers are afraid. Why do you suppose that is? Well, I think they were afraid because they had betrayed Yosef and now he was this great and mighty ruler. Do you think they were expecting forgiveness from him? Do you think they deserved forgiveness? The answer to both of those questions is probably not. However, we see in this chapter that Yosef is willing to forgive them, and he wants to save them from the famine. Now, I just can't help reading this story without thinking about how this is like Yeshua. As we talked about a few chapters ago, Yeshua was also rejected by his brothers in a manner of speaking. And there are many to this day who still do not believe or understand who he is. However, we see in Zechariah 12 verse 10 that some of those people will see who he is. And like Yosef's brothers, they will probably be very afraid and mournful. But as with Yosef, Yeshua is willing to offer mercy. So with that, here's your memory verse for this week. Continue to practice it as much as you need. I wish you all a wonderful week to come, and Shabbat Shalom! Hey kids, today our craft is going to be Joseph revealing himself to his brothers. You'll need tape, paper, some crayons, and a pencil. You're going to fold your paper in half, and then in half again, and then you're going to unfold it and fold in the outer two panels. You're going to put tape on the top and bottom. Then we're going to start drawing Joseph. We're going to draw him in his Egyptian clothing. You can do whatever you like right here, but I just did a simple headdress, a simple robe, and a chest plate. We're going to draw him kind of mad because he's still a little upset with his brothers. I'm going to color in the chest plate and headband in gold, along with the belt. And now you can color him in. After you color him in, you're going to write his Egyptian name, Zafnath Paneach, at the top if you like. You can use your Bible to help you with the spelling if you need. Now we're going to take our tape off. And we're going to open it up. Now we're going to start drawing Joseph in his colorful robe. And we're going to give him a happy face because he's happy now. I drew his arms out wide because he is wanting to embrace his brothers. I drew stripes on mine, but you can doodle however you like. Now you can color them in. This is the perfect time to use all the colors in your box, so have fun with it.
After we color him in, we're gonna write Joseph at the top. Here I use all my colors, but you can just use a pencil. I hope you enjoy this craft today, and you have a good Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Hey kids, today we're gonna make a wagon for our snack. You'll need a plate, one and a half graham crackers, two mini pretzel sticks, four mini Oreos, some chocolate chips, and some other little snacks to put inside. First, we're gonna melt our chocolate, and we're going to break apart the big graham cracker that we have. We're gonna start attaching the little graham crackers as walls for our wagon. After you attach these walls, you can set it on the counter to cool, or you can put it in the freezer so that it will cool faster. Once that is cooled, we're going to start adding our Oreos. These will be the wheels for our wagon, and we're going to attach two on either side of our wagon. After you attach these, you can set it aside to dry. I like to place mine upside down so that the Oreos will stay up. After that, we're going to start adding our pretzels for the hitch of our wagon. I like to put to set mine on the base, on the rim of our plate, so that it doesn't fall over. After that dries, so you can start putting all your snacks in. I hope you enjoy this snack today. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you all for joining us here this Shabbat. We just hope that you have a beautifully blessed week in the week ahead. And we hope that you will join us again for our next lesson. And just have a beautiful, blessed day. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yahweh, please be of Sabbath school, so this Sabbath is good, and we can learn, and we can learn Bible verses and memories verses, and Yahweh, please be with everybody with Shabbat school, so everything goes okay when Shabbat school is on. In Yeshua's name, hallelujah. I can't do it.